Hello, this is Justin from the Dynamail Project. Um, in this screencast, I'm actually going to walk through with you on how to install Dynamail. Um, in my browser, I'm just in the on the dynamailproject.com website, and I'm going to click a big red button that says Get Dynamail, and that'll bring you to the purchase page for ProData. Um, we're just going to install free Dynamail today, um, so all I have to do is click the button that's labeled Download Install. We can always make free data mail into ProData later. Okay, and that'll just bring you to the installation instructions to install data mail. Um, there's a couple steps. First, we have to um, download data mail, the distribution itself, and a helper script. We then have to uh, upload both those files onto our hosting account, and then we have to run the installer. So let's get to it. I'm going to install, I'm sorry, I'm going to download data mail. Um, and the link is right here. We're going to install version 902. So I'm just going to click the link that says download Dynamail underneath where it says download the Dynamail distribution. And uh, Dynamail is currently hosted on SourceForge. It takes a couple seconds for it to kind of kick in. And the dialog box to uh, download a file should appear. And just say OK. And uh, cool. Well, that's downloading. We'll go back to um, the installation instructions and we'll download that helper script. And the helper script is called uncompressed underscore dot CGI. And it's located on this button. So I can either click that button and we'll get kind of the source code. Or I can right click the button and save link as. And just name it uncompressed underscore dot CGI and we'll put that in our downloads directory. Awesome. Okay, so once those two files, uh, the, the distrib itself and the helper script, have been downloaded, we now just have to upload them onto our website. Um, my website is powered by cPanel, which has like a file manager for it. Um, it's a great alternative to an FTP program if you don't have one of those available. So uh, let's get to it. Um, I'm going to go to my Bluehost cPanel, and I'm just going to look under for the file manager. It's called File Manager. Okay, let's see. There it is. So I'm just going to click it. And uh, uh, my website works where uh, files that are, that are in the public underscore HTML directory are um, uh, publicly available. So I'm going to go into there, and this is where I'm going to install that ML. So in the file manager, there's a button called Upload. I'm going to click it, and I'm going to first select the uncompressed underscore dot CGI file, and that's going to upload. And once that's done, I'm going to browse and find the distribution called data-902.tar.gz. Might be called just a little different if you're using a different version. Um, if you notice, um, there's also a directory named data. It looks like um, once um, that distribution was downloaded, my Mac automatically uncompressed it. We don't want to um, upload this directory. Um, we want the distribution. So that's the one. And this might also take um, a little while. It weighs in around 20 megs these days. OK, so uh, once those two files have been uh, uploaded, the uncompressed underscore data the CGI helper script and the, the data mail distribution, um, we're going to go, actually, we can just close this window. And uh, let's see, refresh our file manager. And let's see here, there it is. Labeled reload, not refresh. And you'll see our two files that we just upload it. So one is the distribution and one's the uncompressed underscore dot data dot CGI file. Um, I need to change the the permissions of the helper script so it's executable um, through my web browser. And I can do this in the file manager by right clicking and going all the way down to where it says change permissions. I'm gonna click that. And you get this kind of modal box uh, going. So where it says execute under mode, it goes read, write, execute. We're going to look at execute. Um, just check all the boxes. Then uh, click the button that says change permissions. Fantastic. Now we have to visit that um, script in our browser. So my, uh, my website's called datademo.com. So I'm going to open up a new browser tab. And I'm just going to go to datademo.com. Spelled right. And uh, since I'm in my public HTML directory, I'm just going to um, go to uncompress data.cgi and hit return. If all goes well, I'll get this screen. And it just says it um, uncompressed the distribution, uh, fiddle around with uh, the file permissions, and got the installer set for me to use. 
So all I have to do is click this button to visit the actual installer. And here we are. This is the Dynamail installer. Since this is an installation of Dynamail, I'm going to click the uh, have checked installation rather than upgrade and continue. And we're going to fill out uh, the necessary um, things to install Dynamail. So um, this is uh, the first thing it wants to know is where to find put the dot data underscore files directory. Um, this is the directory Dynamail uses for uh, things like temporary files, logs, um, its own configuration, its own global configuration. So it's somewhere I don't really want accessible really easily, so I don't want to put underneath my public HTML directory. Um, I really want it just in my home directory. So that's uh, what Dynamail will choose if it can find it correctly. And to do that, you just um, select auto. If you don't like where it, where it wants to go, you can click manual and you know set it to your taste. But I'm just going to select auto for now. Um, the next thing it wants me to fill out is the Dynamail URL, basically the URL to the Dynamail we're just installing. Um, it gives its best guess um, automatically, um, which is datademo.com and then slash the data directory, which is what um, Dynamail will uncompress its files into, and then just the mail.cgi um, script. So that looks perfect. If it does for you too, there's no need to change it. This will work fine. The next thing you need to do is uh, look at the support files directory. Again, just like the URL and uh, the data, data, data files uh, directory, it's pre-filled out for you. So if everything looks good, um, just go with it. So it's selected basically my home directory, and then that public HTML directory I installed DataML in, and then the directory name is DataML support files. So that's great. And then you just you just put the corresponding URL. Again, it's done that correctly for me, so I don't have to worry about that. The next thing it wants me to do is set up the Dynamail root password. Now this is something you actually have to put in yourself, so um, select a really good uh, root password. Um, if you kind of bobble up, it'll it'll tell you. So let's not. <laughs> so enter the same password twice, and if you're done, it'll you know kind of give you an error. Okay. The next thing we have to do is set up the backend. So Dynamail will need a SQL backend. Um, I've created one already just to kind of move things along and uh, save the stuff right here. So all I have to do is copy and paste into the Dynamail. So if you're doing this uh, yourself, you might want to do that as well. Set up your MySQL database um, already um, and just make sure you save the, the database server, uh, the, the name of the, your database, the username, and the password for it. So my, server's, uh, my server for my database is just localhost, which is already filled out for me. Um, the database is called data demo, underscore demo. Um, ports auto is fine for me. That works fine. Um, the username is also data demo, underscore demo. So I can just put there and there, right there. And I'll go back. And that's the password for my database. And I can't remember that offhand. So I'm just going to copy it from my notes and paste it there. Great. So just set up the uh, the back end for my for my Dynamo. I'm going to test the, the SQL connection, see if it works. It does. And if I want, I'm all done. Um, I'm going to do one additional step, and that is to install the bounce handler. Um, I think the bounce handler is almost uh, required if you're going to run Dynamo. And um, what you need to do to set up the bounce handler is just set up a POP3 account. Um, and I've done that as well. And I saved the the email address is set up. It's just bounces at datademo.com. Uh, the username, mail.datademo.com. I'm sorry, the username is bounces at datademo. The, uh, the server, which is mail.datademo.com, and the password. So to do that, I'm going to have to click that button that says show hide advanced options. And I want to, I guess this is an advanced option, so let's click it. And under plugins and extensions, which is the first thing, I'm going to look for something called bounce handler. And I just want to make sure that's checked. Might not be. And uh, all I have to do is um, fill in the address, the mail server, the username, and the password, which is perfect because that's what I got right here. So the address is bounces at datademo.com. And uh, it's actually also the username for my uh, mail server. Your, yours might be a little different. And the mail server, as I said, is mail.datademo.com. So let's put that in there. And the password is this goblet gook. Cool. And we're all set. We've just uh, we just configured the bounce handler for Datamail. Um, and just like the SQL database, there's a tester. So if I click the button that says test pop three connection, 
it'll uh, go through the process, see if it can't connect to the, the POP3 server. And it can, so that's cool. Um, and if there's anything else you want to check out, um, do so at your leisure. I'm all done. And I'm just going to have to click the button labeled Configure Data Mail, which I'll do right now. Nope. And uh, Data Mail's uh, installer will go about its business, do all that stuff, and uh, we're all set. So the so the last thing we kind of have to do to get kind of Dynamo running at full steam is uh, set up that cron job. And it'll kind of give it to me right here. And all I have to do is copy it and set that in my cron tab. Now, how do I do that? Um, if you have cPanel, it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to go back to my uh, cPanel right here. And I am going to look for cron. And there it is right there. So I'm going to click that. And it'll enter me into my cron job manager thing. I'm going to set up a new one, which is right here. And for common settings, I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to do once per five minutes. You might want to change this for your taste. If you have a very busy list or lists, you might want to have this for every minute. If you have a list that you only use like once every couple weeks, you can change that to once every hour, but it has to run. Um, and for the command, I'm just going to paste in what Dynamail gave me and uh, click the button that says add new cron job. Couldn't be easier. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my installer and I'm uh, going to have to click this button that says move the dollar dot installer directory and disable the install dot CGI script. Then make sure that no one else can go to the installer and uh, do what I just did, which would not be good. So let's click that and it says it worked. Great. And we're all set. And once I'm ready to use Dynamail, I'll just click this button that says start working with Dynamail. There you go. And uh, this is the congrats screen when you first um, install Dynamail. I'll tell you this. Give you table of contents. So this is just GPL. I'll tell you not to use it for spam, please. And uh, if you agree to that, click that button and enter that Dynamail root password that you just set up. And I know mine. And uh, start setting up a disk. Cool. So let's set up a new list. Let's do it. So it needs a list name. I'm going to call this Justin's. Test list. It's a short name, kind of a shorthand for my list name. Uses it for the URLs you'll see in Dynamail. So I'm just going to call mine Justin because uh, I like Justin. Uh, password. Make a good password for your list specifically. Um, one thing you don't want to do is set this to the same thing as the Dynamail root password. Um, set it something different. Um, okay, so I'm going to set a different password for my list password. So you can have mul many lists and each list can have its own password and that one password will only work for that one list. But if you want access to all your mailing lists at a time, you want to use the Dynamail root password. That's kind of what the differentiation is. Okay, for my list owner, I'm going to use list owner at datademo.com. Um, one thing you probably want to do is make sure that your list owner is the same or kind of belongs to the same uh, domain as what you're installing Dynamail on. So mine, I'm installing this on datademo.com and my my list owner email address is listowner at datademo.com. Okay, add a description. It can be a little colorful. Um, privacy policy. Uh, we don't share nothing with no one. With no one. Yours uh, might be more professional and less cavalier. I'll leave that up to you. And then a, uh, a, a physical address. Um, this is for uh, various laws in at least my country, the U.S., um, depending on uh, uh, dealing with mail lists and running them. So uh, uh, set this to something correctly, please. And uh, you're done. Um, and then you just have to click the button that says create a new mail list or create your mail list. Cool. And the new mail list is created. We can uh, log in if we want. I'm going to log in with Pro.Root password or the Dynamo root password. And that can go away. And you're done. Um, if you want, you can start sending messages. You can add people to uh, your mailing list, um, see what other uh, options you have. And when you're ready, when you're ready, um, you can transform this installation into a Pro.Data installation. Um, you'll first have to pr uh, purchase ProData and then once you have we'll send you the username and password to your account and you just gotta plug in them right there and uh, without having to reinstall or upgrade Dynamail we'll, we'll turn your Dynamail installation to a ProData account. Okay so that's how you install Dynamail. 
Um, to kind of go over it, we first uh, went to the dynamailproject.com website. Uh, we uh, went to the installation uh, documentation. We downloaded those uh, two, two files, the distribution itself and the helper script. Uh, we then uploaded those two files to our website. We uh, changed the permissions of that one file called uncompressed underscore dot data dot CGI. Uh, we then visited that, um, that file in our web browser um, and then went through the installer, filled out all the stuff we needed, basically just the SQL backend um, database login creds and uh, the bounce handler's um, email address. And then we just hit installed. Oh, and then we uh, set up the cron job and then made a new list. So we did actually kind of a lot of things, but we're all for up and running. Um, hopefully uh, that works as well for you as it does for me. Um, let me know how it works for you. Um, and thanks for watching.